Hello. John Hume is an extremely well-known politician, both in Ireland and abroad. He's leader of the Social Democratic Labour Party and is a member of the European Parliament. And he's also successfully handled thousands of radio and television interviews. What questions do you ask before you agree to appear in an interview? I simply ask what is the subject of the interview. Why do you think it's so important to appear on interviews? Well, it's important to me because it's, it's my job. Uh, my, it's my job to communicate communicate my ideas, my thoughts, and what, what, what policies and, uh, and comments I have on particular issues of the day. Uh, it's an essential instrument of my job, communication. Your answers always seem so well organized. Do you have any special device that you use to try and get your points across? The only device I ever use for interviews is to know what I want to say before I do the interview. And I think, uh, while it never comes out, exactly as I have worked it out. The fact that you have in your mind exactly what you want to say means that you know you're never going to be actually stuck in the interview. Uh, because while you may get a question that uh, on the subject that doesn't elicit the information that you want to give, at the same time the knowledge that, that you have uh, ready, the information that you want to impart, means that you, you, you uh, you don't worry about what you're asked because you always have something in reserve to. Do you ever so. speak off the record to interviewers and say, don't ask me that question in the interview? No, no, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. I, um, I would speak off the record to journalists uh, and brief them about what's happening. Uh, but somebody who's actually interviewing you uh, uh, on television or radio, no, I don't think there's, there's any... There's any great practice of off the record in those circumstances. There must be times in an interview when you can't answer a question for one reason or another, maybe confidential. Well, if someone asks me a question that I can't answer, uh, I would simply say that. I would say, well, look, I prefer not to comment on that at this particular point in time for one reason or another. Uh, it doesn't actually arise very often. because You think uh, you lose face when you say that? Yeah, I think you do, because uh, it doesn't arise very often. Because if, in fact, you agree to do an interview, then you agree to talk about the subject and therefore you should answer any question on the subject that you're asked. Uh, the, the answer usually to the question you've just asked me is that if there is something that you don't want to talk about then don't give the interview. There are times when you, when you do get angry at a particular question or at somebody else who's on the program. <coughs> How do you handle your anger? Well I think first of all that if you get angry in a television debate or a radio debate you've lost the argument immediately no matter how good your argument is. So. Uh, the golden rule is never get angry. Do you, always tell, do you always tell the truth on the interview program? Yes, uh, I think that uh, when, you're, if you, when you're asked a question, you should always try to answer the question. Uh, that sometimes can be difficult when, as I say, the, sub, the, the knowledge that you want, you want to say something and you're not being allowed to say it by the questions and you insist that's what you must say. But, by and large, you're much better to just deal straight with the question as it comes at you. There will be occasions when, as I say, the question doesn't tend to allow you to say what you want to say, but you should still deal with it and then say what you want to say. Who has control of the interview? You or the interviewer? The interviewer has control of the questions. You have control of the answers. Uh, so, and the interview, the interview itself is, in fact, question and answer. But won't the audience realise if you're not really dealing with the questions that you've been asked, that you're trying to get your point across? Well, of course, uh, if you're blatantly not answering the question and going off in another direction altogether, then yes. But if you, in fact, are dealing with the subject of the interview in your answers to the questions, then the audience uh, will realise that you're actually talking about the subject of interview and the, the, the actual questions and the response to them won't loom as large in their consciousness. Often politicians are, are people claim that they talk a great deal and say very little. Would you say that criticism could be applied to you in an interview? No, I don't think so. I think a criticism that could be applied to me is that I repeat myself a lot in interviews and say the same things in successive interviews. Because I think one of the things that one has to learn about the public to whom one is communicating is that you have to say the same thing very often before your message gets through. And what has surprised me is that I do say the same things very often, but the public never realise that I'm actually saying something I said before and kept on saying, even using the same words and the same language. For example, if some big event happened tomorrow 
and I have to do an interview on it, and I appear on every television program in sight and every radio program in sight. I'm saying the same thing on each of them, repeating myself all day. Nobody ever notices that, but that is essential if you want to get your message across. You must keep on saying it. And I learned that from the time I was a teacher, and I learned that no matter how brilliant your class, you never teach them anything at one in one lesson. You have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Therefore, if your job is to communicate, uh, you should keep on putting the same simple message over for a period of time until people will walk up to you to the street and tell you what you've been saying as if they, if it, as if it was their, their idea. That means you have been successful in communicating what you want to. So Most interviews aren't very long. Just how much can you get across in one interview? <clears throat> I think there again, it's a question of your efficiency and organisation of yourself. Uh, that's why I always say to an interviewer, what subject and how much time have we? And I then decide what I can say in that time. I think it's a great mistake to try to say too much. I think you should organise to say what you have to say in the time that you have at your disposal. Many interviews are recorded. Do you worry that your ideas, the points that you have to put across, will be misrepresented when the interview is edited? No. No, I think I rely on the professional. Everybody is a professional, and I rely on the professionalism of the editor and the journalist who's dealing with what I have said. And I've never found yet an occasion in which I've had to unduly worry about editing. What's the biggest mistake that you have made in an interview? The biggest mistake that I've made in an interview? Well, I, I you know... I would really have needed notice of that particular question. Uh, I'm not conscious of having made mistakes that I remember, and those are the ones that really, you know, it's, it's when you remember your mistakes that that means they've done you some damage. What's a mistake you wouldn't like to make? I, I would. The mistake I wouldn't like to make is to just go on an interview and, and, and be totally speechless and be unable to deal with the question or not know the answers to the question. But that's elementary stuff, that. I mean, that's, that's elementary, but... But it's a genuine uh, fear for many people who haven't much experience with being interviewed. They're frightened they're going to... I think out. there's no reason for anybody being interviewed being afraid if, if they know the subject that they're being interviewed about. And the very fact, as I said at the beginning, the very fact that someone comes to you to interview you means that you have information that he wants to get from you. It means that you know more about it than he does. And that's the essence of being interviewed and of self-confidence in dealing with them. I know more than you, therefore you can ask me what you like. Do you go into an interview situation with that sort of attitude, well I'll go in and answer any question he asks me? <clears throat> yes, once I have agreed the subject of the interview with him, once I, an interview rings me up and says, oh, could I interview you today, what about? About so-and-so's uh, speech last night. Fair enough. Um, I, I'll do it. I know what I'm being interviewed about, therefore I don't mind. I, I would never take on an interview without knowing the subject in advance. What's the single most important piece of advice that you'd give someone who's been invited onto an interview program? Very simply, to decide before they go on what they want to say and to say it. Simple as that. It's as simple as that because uh, people have something to communicate in an interview. They should, should simply communicate. By appearing on television so often, you have put yourself in the public light, and there are many people who would disagree strongly with your ideas. Do you feel that you're putting your life in danger? Not particularly, no. Um, uh, everybody in Northern Ireland's life is in danger. I, I don't feel any more in danger than most other people in Northern Ireland. I've never had personal security. I've never sought personal security. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in making other people targets because of me. Uh, I think that one is much better anyway not to, have, not to be always guarded by policemen. Have you never been threatened? Oh yes, I've been threatened. Yeah, you get letters all the time threatening, you get phone calls, but I take the simple view that if somebody's going to do something serious to you, they're not going to phone you up and tell you in advance, or write to you and tell you in advance. So, I mean, when you actually get the threat, it means it's meaningless, it's somebody just trying to scare you. It's the people who don't threaten you that you need to worry about. Do you treat television and radio the same? Is there any difference between an interview on radio and on television? Oh, there, well, there's a difference in that on television, you know, you're being watched as well as being listened to. In radio, you can sit and have a smoke, or you can even have a drink, or you can even, you know, you, you can actually have a more relaxed approach to radio. Uh, in, in many ways, too, radio is a better means of communication than television, because quite often, television is about the image, it is about pictures, 
uh, and the picture, the visual impact is greater on people than the verbal impact. Therefore, quite often you get more over on radio than you do on television to the public because often on television they're looking at you rather than listening to you, whereas in, 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 in radio they're, active, they're listening. Do you worry about how, how you look on television? <clears throat> no, I've never worried about that, but I've been told off about it quite a bit, but I never worry about it. Many interviewers aren't very good. The, the questions they asked aren't very good. Well, all interviews are really the same. Uh, I think I keep coming back to this. Uh, interviews, interviews are means of the interviewee communicating what he wants to communicate about the subject. Therefore, whether the questions are good, bad or different, hostile or friendly, it's the same. The interviewee has the same job to do. It doesn't change. But often an interviewer will ask a question where there are many parts in it. It might be double-barreled or triple-barreled. What do you do in that sort of interview? Well, I think that if you can, if I think it's very effective to be able to say there's several points in your question. One, two, three, four, let them. That's very impressive to do that. And I think if you can do that, you should do that. And if you hear a man coming over with several parts in the question, it's very, very impressive to the audience and therefore strengthens the message that you're putting over. If you can say in response, well, you made there's three parts to your question. One, my answer is two, my answer is three, my answer is. And uh, I think that is very effective. If there are two reporters outside your office, one of them is a journalist writing for a newspaper and another is somebody from a radio or television station, and you had to give one interview, who would you give it to first? It would depend. On what? It would depend exactly on what the interview was about and uh, what I needed to, you know, what was a necessity at that particular time. I don't think you can have, have uh, fixed rules about which is the more important at a particular time. In terms of communication, of course, to the public at large, there isn't any doubt that both television and radio are much, much more effective means of communication than newspapers. But I don't think one should ever forget the newspaper in terms of the record. Uh, and, and, you know, when you're actually making speeches or putting out statements, um, because actually people take in, people who read the newspapers take in more than people who actually watch some television and listen to the radio. When you appear on television <coughs> and radio, who do you think you're talking to? To the audience, to the people. Yeah, but who are they? Are they fellow politicians? Are they voters? Are they... Look, no, they're the public, as far as I'm concerned. They're the whole public, because that's my job, is to communicate to the whole public. So I'm not talking to any one section of them. And yet, what sort of characteristics of the public do you have in mind? Well, I don't really have any characteristics of the public in mind. I have in mind that I'm talking to the public about what I'm either doing or thinking or saying at a particular time. And my job is to get it over to them. And the purpose of that may well be to, to inform them of something that I'm doing. Or it may be to, to argue uh, a policy, a case, a line. But whatever it is, I've got to get it over to them. John Hume, thank you very much.